okay, folks, there are going to be dozens more videos after this to show all the finer points of what can be done in Premiere Pro. This is just to get you started, uh, you know, less than 45 minutes, hopefully, of tutorials or, you know, a little more than 45 to show you how to get started editing your video. So now let's talk about we want to go to the web with this, right? Are we going to go to a Blu-ray disc or a DVD? What are we going to do to get this out to the world? Well, let's, let's save just to be safe. And uh, once again, if you're following me, you've just jumped in another place I, I am in. If you, if you want to see how my workspace is set up, I'm in the editing CS 5.5 workspace. That's very important or, or, or this stuff is not going to look like you're seeing it here now. Okay, so I want this video to go out to the web. I'm going to click on this sequence. This is telling it to render from here. I can also click on this. Either this or this has to be selected before we go to render out. I usually do it here. It really doesn't matter, though. I'm going to say File, Export, Media. Okay. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do export for, me, uh, for your media. We can go to the queue. Let's say, for instance, you've made 15 videos, and you want to go to bed at night and let them all render out. Well, we can do a queue. We'll set up a queue later. I'm not going to do that right now. Right now, we're just going to export this one piece of video that we have, and we can see that it's only a 20-second video. And if we want to drag around to see where we are in the video, this is to preview it to see what we're going to see. It's rendering it out a little bit, and it's showing us what we're going to get. So you can do that. You don't even have to do that. This is what's more important up here. How are you going to put it out to the world? Well, there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. You click on here, you're going to get big time blown away. Like, oh, crap, what am I going to do here? Well, honestly, 90% of the time, I'm going to use H.264. There may be an H.265 codec coming out pretty soon as I'm doing this. Uh, it's been developed, but right now H.264 is what we mostly all use for YouTube, for Blu-ray discs, for DVDs. It's almost like the, the uh, Swiss Army knife of video codecs. It's a great, great codec. Now, there are other ones down here, MPEG-4, Blu-ray. This gives you an awful lot of options, and it gives you a superior sort of, uh, of rendering codec. When I say codec, that's C-O-D-E-C. It stands for code decode, code decode. You'll learn all this stuff if you've not learned it already. So I use H.264, and I'm totally happy with that. I'm going to click on it, and so that's what I'm going to use. Now, it says Preset Custom. Well, there's different kinds of presets. If you want to click on here, you can see all kinds of presets that come with Premiere Pro. So if you don't know what you're doing, you know, there's some safe ones you can use. Uh, you know, HD, since we're doing 29.97 uh, video, HD... Uh, 1080p, 2997, you might use that. I usually do set my own up. and uh, But, you know, you can pick one of these. This is a good one. Um, at, this, at some point, we're going to have to talk a little bit about video theory, I guess. Uh, let's not get too deep into it right now. Right now, I've got some 29.97 uh, video in this. I've also got some 60 frame per second video. What it's going to do, it's going to take the 60 frame per second video and it's going to it's going to take the frame rate down. It will look just fine. It will work just fine. And what I like to do, I like to, to look at this video and say, okay, how much of this, how much bits, how much data do I want to put in this video? Now, the way you do that, you come here to your video settings. You got effects, you got video, you got audio. The the two I usually use when I'm doing export are just these two: the video and the audio. So I'm gonna click on video 1920 by 1080. I did shoot this video, most of it progressive. There's some of it that's not. What progressive? Once again, we need to get into this at a, at a later time. There's progressive. There's interlaced video. There are differences to these, but what we've done in this conversion process, it's going to work just fine. Progressive. I'm going to leave it at progressive. And most of the time you're going to want it to be progressive square pixels. Yes, that's good. Square pixels. If you're using interlaced video, you might have something different here, but uh, square pixels for now is what we want. NTSC is the American standard. PAL is the European standard. Now, if let's say we're going to YouTube, you might want to change this main to high. I'm going to leave it at main right now. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to go down here and look. Okay, I've got this bit rate. And by this, I mean this is how many megabits per second, megabits per second are going into the end of this video. If I want this to be a very high quality video, I'm going to leave it at this. I could even make it go higher if I wanted to. Like my GoPro video that I've shot is shot at mostly 35 megs per second. So I might want to. What, what's happening here? We're seeing a... It's called a variable bit rate. We're telling it a low end, 
to uh, put in here if we want to save a little bit of space and we're telling it a high end. The most video it's going to put into one second of video of uh, most data it's going to put into one second of video is 40 megs. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, this looks okay. I am going to hit use maximum render quality. I like to do that just to make it maximum quality. I can see here my 20 second video is going to be 79 megs. So I'm going to tell it where I want it to go. Let me hit cancel again. So here's what you do. You click on output name. And it's going to tell it where you're going to go. So here's where I did the video last night, one of my videos to my subscribers. I'm going to go down here, and I've done this in Charlotte video in my garden. I've, I've got our, our Premiere Pro lesson down here. I'm going to go ahead and save it into this one. And it's, it, it's named what my sequence is named. I can name it anything I want to, too. We'll call it Test Video for Lesson. So I'm going to say Save. Still not going to do it yet until I hit Export. And so now I'm going to click export. And now what it's doing, it's rendering the video. So while we wait just a second, what is happening? Why is it, why is it taking a while to do this? Because we applied some color adjustment to it. We applied some brightness contrast to it. We put titles over it. We created transition, uh, transitions. And we put two pieces of musical audio <laughs> under it as a music bed. And we crossfaded those things together. So what it's doing, it's taking a while for this computer. And I'm using a pretty stout computer. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. I've got a solid state memory. I've got a, core, a third generation Core i7 processor in here uh, with, I think, eight cores. So, you know, this is, this, is, this is to be expected, folks. It's going to take a little while. The more you do to your video, the longer it's going to take for it to render. The less you do to your video, let's say you just shoot your video and it looks just great, you don't have to do color adjustment or anything and fancy things to it, then it will render very quick. Now here my AVG is telling me I need to update, and we'll worry about that later. I'll say no. That's an unfortunate time to come in. And here we are. Now we've got, now once again, you'll get to the end, and you'll think it's finished, and sometimes it'll fake you out. I'm going to save again. And so let's take a look at what our final product was. I'm going to tab over, and we put our test video for lesson here, right? Now, you're watching this with Snagit. This was captured with Snagit, and Snagit is a 10-frame-per-second uh, video program, so this is not going to look as smooth as it would if you watched it on YouTube at 30 frames per second. But I'm going to double-click on it, and here we come. Here's our video, Tony's Fun Day. And there's my rose. And my Rose of Sharon. And here's Socks the Cat. And then we go into the Charlotte thing. And you couldn't see all that because I had it uh, somewhat off screen. Once again, we won't watch all of it, but there it is. And you can see it's all, it's all on there. It's a 1080p piece of video. And once again, you're watching it 10 frames per second instead of the 30 frames per second. It will fade out at the end and so will our music. Okay. There we go, folks. We have exported some video. So we do have additional lessons coming. This is the first hour of video just to get you up and running in less than one hour. So we're going to look at a whole lot of different things, how to do fancier transitions, how to make photos move. That's what's called the Ken Burns effect. We're going to do a whole lot more with the effects. Uh, we're going to learn how to do some fancier things with titles, scrolling titles and things like that. We're going to learn fancier ways to... Uh, move video to smooth video out and make it less herky-jerky. So there's just a whole lot more to come. This is part one in getting started with Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2014. Thanks.